This week, I've been spending some time thinking about how I want to structure my business in the future, and I want to share those thoughts with you. Hey, everybody, what's up, and welcome to another week of Wins and Fails. If you've been watching the episode last week where I told you that I'm struggling, not very happy, and that I will be taking a day off. It's what I did this week. So this week I had a day off just to chill, read a book, take a walk with myself, and I really, really enjoyed it. And even though I was planning on not doing like work, proper work, I didn't schedule anything for that day, I ended up thinking a lot about my business, obviously, and how I want it to look like in the future. And I kind of came to two different business models where my business can go to. And depending on which one I chose, it's, I'm going to have to structure my business differently, hire different people, and take different actions. So I think it's really important understanding where you want to go in order to know what is the relevant next step that you should uh, be taking in your business. So I want to share those two models with you. I'm actually not really sure which one um, I will be taking, but I want to show you the kind of options and how I'm thinking about this. So let me get started with saying that my goal for the business that I'm trying to build right now is to build the best online school for digital designers. Right now I'm calling it digital designers because I think maybe if I call it the full stack designers, maybe it's a bit too vague. And I think that right now, it's best if I start with something like web design and then grow maybe into product design and other stuff that you do kind of like UX, UI, and all of those new kind of uh, design. I'm, when I'm saying digital design, I'm, I'm saying I'm not really about to teach print design or maybe branding, yes, but right now I think the good framing for this would be digital designer. Right, so the first model that I can take is the agency plus school model. And you've probably seen this around if you're a designer and you know the other uh, players in the design field. So we have the future, which is a good example for this. The future is uh, Christo started blind and they have blind as an agency um, operating right now. They have clients there. They've accumulated a lot of knowledge about the design business and running an agency. And they've started the future as a school to bring the knowledge from blind into sharing that with the design community. Another example of that might be AJ and Smart, which has an agency that runs design sprints. And so they are actually doing this with client. And then they've open up a masterclass for design sprints and they're selling that knowledge which they have accumulated in their agency and selling that in their school. Now, basically, this is where I started, right? I have a freelance business and I've accumulated knowledge in running a business, running a freelance business and doing web design, doing product design, or doing all sorts of stuff. And the first thing that I did is to take my personal expertise from the freelance business that I have and created my first course, the Webflow Masterclass, based on that knowledge that I have. So this is model number one. Um, and again, as I said, you have an agency, or in my case, it's a freelance business, but you can call it an agency. And the knowledge from that agency goes into a school. Now, the second model is the model of school with external experts, expert. And that is, you probably know this model from huge websites like lynda.com or Creative Lives, where you basically, you have a platform and that platform basically brings the best teachers from every subject. And they take those experts knowledge and they bring that into the school itself. So as you can see, it's a different model where they just bring in the knowledge. It's not part of the school. The knowledge is not part of the same business. Um, it's coming out from external experts um, around the world. Now, this is a different model. And the reason that I'm considering this is mainly because, you know, right now I've this is the first quarter where I've actually stopped doing client work just because I can't like right now as a one person operation, I don't have enough time to run a freelance business and run a school at the same time. So while I'm building my school, I've actually shut down the freelance business and I'm focusing on building the school. 
That means that every month that I'm not doing actual client work, design work, I'm kind of like getting farther away from the expertise of actually running a business. And especially if I'll do that in a, in a few years, if I'm thinking long-term right now, if for the next five years, I'll only be focused on building a school, then I won't really know the, you know, the, the newest tools, the newest trends, the newest ways of working and like be the most expert on, you know, building websites or, or, you know, doing product design or whatnot, whatever, or doing branding, any of the services that I currently use to offer my, uh, you know, my, my clients. So I'm getting, I'm losing my expertise as time goes by when I'm not actually doing this. And so because I want to focus right now on building the school, I'm saying, okay, if I can't be the expert long-term, maybe I have to build in relationship with other people that are actually better than me, right? Because I am not the best designer in the world, but maybe I can find the best designer in the world and bring their knowledge into my school and kind of do it that way. So that's, that's the two different models that I'm considering. And those are basically the reasons why I'm considering them. That being said, there are challenges and limitations to both of them, which is why I'm considering where I should go. And again, based on making this decision, I really have to understand, do I have to start my own agency? Um, Because again, I can't do anything myself. I can do everything myself as a one person operation. So if I want to keep doing client work, I'm going to have to hire a designer maybe that's going to actually do the client work and I'll manage them or something like that. But if I want to go with the second model, then I'm going to have to reach out to other, you know, professional, other experts, develop relationship with them and bring their expertise into my school. So each of them has to kind of has a different roadmap to build. Now let's talk about what I think are the challenges to each one of those models. So with the first model, with model A, the challenge is that I'm going to have to build two businesses at the same time, as I've mentioned, I'm going to have to build an amazing agency that does really the best work while I'm building the school. So it's actually starting two businesses. And this is going to be very hard because obviously just starting one business, just building an amazing agency is tough enough by itself. Just building a good school and giving good educational experience, that's really hard as itself. So doing them together, that's a lot to handle. And that's really, really challenging. The the thing about the the others that I mentioned, the future and AJ and Smart, is that they've had a running agency um, before they've started the school. So they kind of had this, not on autopilot, because I don't think that running an agency is ever on autopilot, but they already have this structure, the infrastructure for this set up in place, and they can just move it on into doing building a school. I, because I was a freelancer doing everything myself, I can't, that can't run without me. Uh, so I'm gonna have to build something there. So that's a big challenge for me to, to handle both of them at the same time. At the same time, if I go to model number B, it, it, number B. <laughs> the second model, it's not as if it's going to be easier because even if I reach out to the best people, the best web designers, the best, um, you know, best product people, product designers, and I try to bring their knowledge into my school, the best designers in the world are not necessarily the best teachers in the world. So it's not always likely that the fact that you're a good designer means that you're a good communicator, that you can, you know, explain how you think, explain your processes. Now, one thing that I learned by having this YouTube channel and also having my course and getting feedback on it is that people live like the way that I communicate, right? They like learning from me. And so I'm not sure how that would work if I bring in other people, maybe they're not good in front of the camera. Maybe they're not good in in presenting their idea and their processes. So doing that translation, taking that expert knowledge and turning that into, you know, educational, content that's that people like to digest that people like to learn from that people like to um, consume that they can watch want to watch they can learn from that's going to be a very hard challenge as well so as you can see each one of those models has its challenges none of them is going to be easier um but right now i'm i'm really not sure where i'll go so i think the first step 
in mo moving forward for myself is that the next maybe two courses, and I already know that the next course that I'm going to do is going to be about web design. Currently, the, the, process, the course that I have is about web development, right, for designers. So you have a design, you want to build it in Webflow. But I, I get a lot of questions from my students and also from people who are not my students who are saying, okay, building a website in Webflow, it's great, but I want to learn how to better design them. So I think that the next course I'm going to do is going to be about the design process itself. And I think that I'm going to do it myself with my expert knowledge, just because at this point, I'm still, I would consider myself an expert on that topic. I can still create that content rather easily. Um, but the next step after the next course or two, is it going to be only me? Am I have to going to build an agency myself or start working with um, outside experts? Not sure at this point, but this is what I'm considering. And this is a decision that I'll definitely have to make as I move along. I hope this was helpful just to show you how I'm thinking and kind of like working through uh, my journey not even sure how this is going to end up, but it's definitely an adventure and I love sharing that with you. Hope this was helpful for you. I'll catch you on the next video.